the good. The bad. The ugly. Miami of Ohio found out who the real Miami really is when it came to the hard rock. This is the good, bad, and ugly film review. Let's jump straight into it. The good. All right, before we get started, just to let you know, all of these videos have been demonetized by YouTube because of the footage that we use. Only thing coaches is asking, share it around, give it a like, and subscribe. That's it. Let's get this thing rocking, man. Let's start this off. Early in the first quarter, you see my man TVD got this thing rocking. Boom. Quick little jailbreak screen right here. Great job here to Kobe Young, number four. Gets up to tail. Number seven is clearly blocking right here perfectly. Does a great job down the field. Number seven, right down Restrepo, making it happen. Holla at you, touchdown. Pluck those birds. All right, third and 11. Here's a great play right here by the defense coming off. Look at the long stunt right here, Jafari Harvey on the sack. But here's the great part about this. Check this out. You're going to see this stunt. These guys, everybody's going inside, inside, inside. He's going to actually come all the way around. All right, so this is a very long stunt, but they know they have a little bit of time because it is third and 11. Check it out. See him coming all the way around. Boom. Seals the edge. Number 12 makes the play right there in the backfield, setting the tone right there for the Hurricanes. Another great blitz package right here by Wesley Bassaint, number 31. Let's look at it. Let's talk about it. Straight blitz package. You see him coming in. Once they get occupied, he walks straight through. Great job here setting the edge and the edge. There's no way for him to escape. Here comes the pressure right up the middle. Bingo. Done with Dada. Love it right there by Wesley Bassaint. Third and two right here. We're in a real tight goal line looking package. All right. Old school look deep, but it's all clogged up because everybody's anticipating, right? The run straight up the gut. But here's what the best part is. The running back sees that, puts his foot in the ground right here. Says, nope, no room. Let me go ahead and hit the perimeter. Gets around the edge and holla at you. Here's where I think he, what he should have done, right? He could either put that jab stuff and get back outside, but you always want to run away from the defense. Look at the pursuit. Even if you cut back on this guy, these guys got you. Stay outside. Even if you stayed outside, you can use your free arm to stiff him off your legs and continue to run. But once you get back inside, yeah, you made him miss, but guess what? The pursuit would have definitely got him anyway, as it did. First and 10 here in the second quarter inside. This is a great run right here, right? I'm getting mad at Restrepo. Let me go back a little bit so I can show you exactly what I mean. Restrepo is going to come in motion. Here's a great cutback here uh, um, by a running back. Great hole. But look at what Restrepo does. He could have actually set him free. He sees it. He turns on. I'm not mad he missed this guy, but he doesn't engage this guy, right? So these are good plays. Great run kind of shields him off you got to engage this guy and keep going because because you don't engage him look what happens you could have blocked him held him up he could have had a touchdown here but instead he's the one who actually forces him out of bounds come on Restrepo you got to do better than that you're a vet first and 10 58 seconds left in the half I'm loving this formation right here on our 25 yard line but again another cutback through this deal this is a great push up the gut. And this is why I put this on here because we weren't getting a lot of push from my interior run. But as we see it right here on the interior, everybody's blocking. And I understand Restrepo's here. I get it. But it will be great for him to come right in here and block that guy. But that's cool. But I love it. Good, tough 10-yard run. First and 20, of course, we know we had a, a holding penalty there. So we first and 20 on this deal coming in. 15 seconds left before the half, right? Here's what I really enjoyed about this play, right? A lot of people are not thinking about it. We're going to run the play, run the ball. But Henry Parrish puts his foot in the ground and cuts this deal back. Boom, he hits, but he sees it. My man is blocking. I forget his name from Oregon, the older guy, right? But he's blocking downfield. Everybody's engaged. Look at this great job. 
Boom, you see seven on here, getting ready to make a block. Perfect. Now we downfield here, getting ready to make another block. Holla at you, let's go. Field goal range. And we end up with a field goal in that deal. We get an offsides here on defense, and this is big right here. Free play for the offense. TVD is a vet, he knows this, right? They jump offsides. Free play, make it happen. Everybody's still engaged. He directing traffic, but what I love is keep his eyes downfield, extends the play, throws it downfield, boom! Comes back with a great touch right there from number seven, Xavier Restrepo, getting up field, making it happen. All that on the free play, I love it. 11 minutes in the third quarter. Here we go, check it out. Big Cooper pulling around the corner. Now I will say this, he could be a little bit tighter knowing he doesn't have to log this guy. You know, coach like to get a little critical. But big dude's pulling. He's a little, he's he's bellying this a little bit. He should be a little bit tighter right in here. So when this guy shows it, a pop. But that's fine, no big deal. He sees it, my man's still blocking. I love how he comes off and gets this block. And now we off to the races with the freshman out here for the tub, baby. Yes, sir. First one for his career. First one for him. Awesome. When I say this was a statement play right here, the fact that the route was run great, yeah, we could have ran the two-point conversion because they had three. The analytical chart says, yes, go for two. Didn't necessarily have to. I don't think we were ever in any danger of them coming back in this game. But here's what I love about this. A stat concept. You're going to motion to a bunch conscious concept. That changes the entire defense for them, believe it or not. But they're going to lose Restrepo, right? He know he has them. He's going to take the point man. He's going to cross because they're still playing stack. What they should have done was played in and out right here. He should have taken Restrepo, and this gentleman right here should have taken the first inside. But because there was no communication, he comes across. Now he gets caught up looking in the backfield. And before you know it, boom, hits him right down the line for the two-point conversion. And what I loved about that play the most is it set a statement for the Miami Hurricanes saying, look here, we ain't just going to take anything. We're going to give it to you. First and 10, 28 seconds left in the third. Great throw right here, man. And this is where we talk about trust all the time. A lot of people get on TVD for throwing it to Restrepo. And I'm going to show you some guys that are open. I totally get it. Right? It's only first and 10. But it's an out and up deal. You got a, a late crosser coming in, but he's made his mind up. I'm throwing it to my, to my roommate. But you got a guy right here open underneath. Not a hard throw, but that's the Tyler Van Dimes I've been looking for. Love it. Give it to him, X, man. Give it to him. Here we are, 13:45 uh, left in the first. I'm sorry, in the fourth quarter, second and seven. I love the fact we're using a lot of motion, but here go Henry Parrish. He finna snap an ankle or two, and this is kind of what I was looking at before uh, earlier. I forgot who the running back was. If he could have gave him just a little jab inside to stay back outside, uh, uh, that was uh, a jai right here. That's enough for him to stop his feet, right? Stops his feet, not knowing, trusting his defense. Stops his feet, thinking, hey, I got to make a play in here. Before you know it, make him stop his feet. He's done. Holla at you. Dive on in and go swimming, baby. Go swimming. Yes, sir. Kane's looking great right now. We're on defense, fourth and six. This is huge right here. Fourth and six. Great, great play. And I'm going to bring this up in the bad and the uglies while he gets out the pocket. I don't necessarily like that a lot. But we're dropping off Nigel Lee Kelly here, defensive end from the hometown. And I put this as good because Nigel Lee actually made a great play on this. Although he's spot dropping, he has to understand who he has and why he has them. All right. So he kind of dropped to a spot, not realizing sometimes you got to play the man. If you use the basketball, yeah, you have a zone, but. If a guy's in your zone, you got to go to him. And you have to understand that. But pops in and makes a great play right there at the very end. Let me show you exactly what I mean. You know you have a corner here. And this is where players have to be really engaged. You have a player here. It's only two guys, right, and a running back. So those are your three guys that are your threat. They show pass. Perfect. Well, it's only two. Inside guy ran past you. Don't overrun this guy. You ran past him because if he drills his ball in here, it's first. But he was late. He was late. 
Also, we didn't do a good job holding the edge here, and I'm going to talk about that in the bats in a second. But a great way to stick your hand in that nine and make a big play, baby. I'm loving it. 438 left. Uh-oh. The Don is back, baby. Skeet. Mm -hmm. That's how you run him over. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Great play right here. We see it. He sees it. Boom. A lot of penetration. Don't necessarily like that. But that's the vet in him. Gets down there. What I like about it, power and get behind his pads and force his way in. Perfect job. Now let's get to the bad. The bad. All right, here we go. We into the bad right now. Let's see what we can do and what needs to be worked on. Here's Here right here was really bad, to be very honest with you. Bad pursuit angle right there by number zero. Let's talk about it. He's going to get the quick bubble screen here. Takes a terrible angle because he's not trusting the pyramid or the triangle, right? He should have inside shoulder. He should be on top of this deal and he should be setting the edge. That's exactly what you're going to see. Watch it. Boom. Edge setter. Perfect. He's going to be right on top of this route, but he doesn't trust it to take away the inside. Look at it. He's already too high. He should be attacking right through here, trusting that. I believe that's James Williams coming down right on top. But because he doesn't, they're right on top of each other. Boom. Cuts back and both of them messed up. I'm sorry. That wasn't James. That was Cam Kitchen. Excuse me. Okay. That right there is bad. We got to be able to trust our team, know how to play within the integrity of the defense. Punt. I put this up here, right? Come on, X-Man. You are a vet. You are a vet. We all know heels on the 10, right? I get it. You want to put them on the 8 or the 9. Not really tripping, right? Because these punters are getting very good at killing the ball, making it fall in, in bounds. But here's what you do. You back up even more. And now you're all the way down to the 3. Fortunately for us, GDI right here, gosh darn individual, wants to get on Sports Center, So he gives us a first for a personal foul. But we got to know better right there, X. Not to back up. You got to let it go and take your chances with the bounce of the ball. Here we are, third and seven, right? Got to get off the field. What do we do? We bring pressure. Throws the ball right over the top. Again, here's a lot that we're starting to see through Lance Gidry dropping these ends back a lot. Let's talk about this. You're going to see Jafar Harvey. He's going to be a drop player. You got a corner here knowing he has deep third. That's exactly what he gets. Boom, deep third right here in Brown. Here's typically the rule. When you're a drop in, nothing crosses your face. If it crosses your face outside, you carry it like it's man. Why is that? Because if they do exactly what they did, run him off, there's a void sitting in here. So if you let him go outside and you just sit in your, your curl to flat, it's going to be a void, and that's exactly what happens, right? He sits. Here's the void, right? Because he runs vertical. You must carry that man. Crosses your face, carry him. And you'll learn that. Hopefully, they'll start teaching that more and more and more. Here we are, another third and six situation. Okay? Not liking this. We, we're getting real heavy with these drop ins. And I understand that's Lance Gidry's defense. Uh oh, coach going too fast. We're dropping ins, but we don't have an edge. Look at this. We, we stun inside, but there's no edge. We literally have one, two, three four guys over four there's the running back the two receivers okay so we got four guys over here somebody's supposed to be spying whatever they doing too big big of a job dropping back on third and six we got to be able to contain this edge keep them in here so that way that way we can keep them in the pocket but once he gets out now you got to cover more second and eight talk about a lot of edge right here this was actually a great play by Cloyd, but I want to talk about why I put it on the bad. Again, we got to talk about edges. Right here, we're going to stun inside. There's really no edge to this. Cloyd goes underneath this. If this guy doesn't whiff this block, he is outside the pocket. Here's the deal. You got one, two receivers that could be blockers or run them down the field. There's nobody left. Nobody left for the, for the running back out here. All right? There's nobody left. Great play by Cloyd, not to knock that, but overall schematically, bad on the defense. Cloyd goes underneath. Running back definitely could be out here because he got blocker, blocker. The next person unblocked is 25 yards down the field. Great play right here. Great play. Happy for him. 
I think I might have an end zone cut of this. Yep, perfect. Great job. End zone cut. Here's perfect right here. If 88 doesn't whiff this block, look at all this is sealed up. So if he doesn't whiff this block right here, you got a blocker here. It's a blocker outside. And the safety's the only one over the top, but he makes a great tackle right there. Great job. All right, we got the young buck in there, Emory Williams in there in his debut. Does a good job here sitting in the pocket. Now he has to escape. Why did I make this bad? I'm going to show you exactly why I made this bad. All right. It's second and seven. Here it is. He sits up, but what do we have to do? Everybody's blocking, so there's some kind of miscommunication in here. I don't know what it is. Like, he's blocking, he's coming back. But there's a guy. You got to put this ball in here. Second. Got to know to throw it out there. You got a blocker. That's why he's there. Throw it. Okay. The alarm clock got to go off in your head. All right. Again, I know you're young. I know he's young. He'll get it in time. But I got to treat it for what it is. Let's go ahead and get straight to the ugly. The ugly. All right. Here we go. Let's talk about the ugly. Here we are right here. We're going to see a, a total catastrophe right here when it comes to the offensive line. Everybody gets through first and 10. Right, I get it. Got to get the rust off. But look how much penetration. Three guys through here on a run of play. This play doesn't have a chance. Still end up getting one yard out of it. Great job there. Okay, here's the interception. A lot of people have been talking about this. Let me break this down. Here's exactly what happens. You're going to see a crossing route coming through here. All right, they're running a crossing concept through here. This gentleman right here is the one who makes the interception. You can call him the slot corner, the nickel, whatever you want to call him. All right. He's got, his guy goes in. TVD never sees him. Now, people are going to say, oh, you're supposed to see him. Typically, the corner is the one who insulates those kind of routes. See, this is the over that's coming now. It still isn't there. But here's what he did a good job. You saw it. He would have called flipping fine. He flipped his head and he found the guy coming across and ran straight to him. The reason that's important because there's no other receiver at that point and TVD could not see him. Let's talk about it. Right? Think about it. He knows this guy's gone. Boom. He goes out. You know to see his eyes. Nobody's sitting short. Now he's going to flip and find. Great job right here. He sees the crossing route. Now TVD should have hit this guy out here, but they have a guy out here on him. Watch him insulate this route. Look how far he is. Nobody's thinking the linebacker who is way down here is going to be 20 yards down the field. And he just ropes it. I, I put it as bad because of what it is, but it was a great play by that defender, man. Great play. Now, TVD could have put some fire on it, but they said he had a you know hand injury or something to that effect. But that's no excuse at the end of the day. Third and three. This right here is bad business in my opinion. Third and three, we have to be able to convert these. If we're going to run it, let's run it. But we get a lot of penetration here on Matt Lee, the center. But it's not totally Matt Lee's fault. And I'm going to explain why. It looked to be an outside zone play. And Inez Cooper went moved too fast to the next level. Watch everybody's movement. You're going to see a hook right here by this tackle. Boom. See the little reach block. Inez Cooper, watch him. See him pop out too fast. He didn't give Matt Lee enough time to get his hips around. And he got too much penetration. Therefore, running back had to put his foot in the ground and get vertical. If not, he would have had to belly out, and there it is. So the backside uh, rush in, chase in, breaks it down, and that's where the problem lies, okay? Now, if TVD was a zone read guy, he could have pulled it and took off for the first. That's fine, but he didn't. So that's what happened. Matt Lee gets too much penetration. I think Inez Cooper gets too fast up the field. Instead of him securing it, letting Matt Lee get his hips around and cut him off, he took off too fast on him, and therefore that's how you had the penetration that you got. Let's check it out. Right in here, there's a problem. Boom, big dude comes. Cooper comes off. It blows the play up. Now it's fourth down. First and 10 for Ohio. That's what I'm going to call him. Big play right here. And there's a lot I need to talk about this. First of all, the defensive end number 13 runs up the field. You're going to see him clearly run clear up this field right here, right? And he's locked his hips. I mean, he's turned his hips inside. His shoulders are not parallel to the line of scrimmage. When you see that, he opens it up. Also, this gentleman right here, I'm not, I believe that's Harris, if I'm not mistaken. You'll see it from the end zone cut. His eyes were bad on that play. He's looking in the backfield, and he gets caught up. 
I think I have the end zone cut of this. Perfect. Here's the guy right here that springs him free is between these two. Also, you're going to see right here in 55, he doesn't fight it. He just stands still holding his ground. You can't fight the zone that way. You can't fight the outside zone. It's a split zone. See, he's just holding his ground. His feet are not moving. They're doubling him. They're doubling him. They're doubling him. Right? He's never fighting it. But look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. His eyes are way back here at the quarterback and not on his job. And that's what hurts him. Also, his shoulders are locked in. Shoulders need to be parallel and, and crab walking this dude into the hole, constricting this hole to make him bounce it outside. But right here, Harris' eyes are bad, and that's what causes that. Let's see if we can go back and see this. Right here, you're going to see very bad eyes. Run up the field, get locked. Right here, these three right here. Look at his eyes. See his eyes? Still there. Running back is here. Running back is here. Running back is here. I'm still looking. Okay? And that's where it gets bad. Now it gets here. We got a good pursuit right here. 22 kind of gets turned around. Gets stiffed a little bit. And look at James out there making a play. Loving it. Second and 12. I put this as bad just because it's bomb city. But I, to be honest with you, it's great coverage. Just a great throw. Great catch. Just got to be worked better on getting him offline. Working him offline. Don't let him have his way. Got to work him offline. Okay? And it's actually a slot fade right here. It's not this gentleman. You're going to see him here, and he's going to fade out. I mean, he's in his hip, but you got to work him off the line. And there's techniques for that, right? You got hip pushes and those type of things. Here we go. Backup quarterback in at this point. All right, here's where the issue is. Again, he's drop ins. It's second and 10. Okay? Yes, he's going to be a drop in. Again, we got one, two, three, four guys over here versus their three. I understand it. But that's what coach wants to do. That's what he's going to do. But here's where the problem is. He drops and it's clearly a run play. If he comes and plays the edge like a defensive end, there's no cutback lane. Now, look at this. We got two oranges on top of each other. Problem. He should be sitting right in here making this play. Second is now that allows him to come off and create this seal. And now we off to the races right there. Great tackle. So that's it with the ugly. So to all my Kane fans out there, I know you're super excited about this, man. The season is here. The Canes look good. There's definitely some things we have to work on, like every team. But we play Texas A&M next week. It's time to give them the business. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We're on our road to 35,000 subscribers. Make sure you're one of them.